So first of all, I want to say thank you for all of your efforts. I really appreciate what you have done in this project. Actually, it was very nice to meet you all and to uh, share our knowledge during the challenge period. Uh, hoping to add some value to this work together, participating uh, to the medical. Uh, uh, it was very nice to meet you all and to share our knowledge during the challenge period. Uh, hoping to add some value to this work together, uh, particularly to the medical field in order to assist people, at least in the early diagnosis of leukemia, um, and to facilitate the process uh, using the power of AI. So today's meeting is the final meeting for the challenge. We will uh, conclude the results that we achieved, the limitations and challenges we faced, and the overall workflow. Uh, finally, please make sure that all codes are pushed to GitHub and the Notion folder is updated with the data. And just to let you know that we will uh, wrap up our challenge by a short video. So this meeting will be recorded. So now uh, the task leaders will present the work. After that, we can discuss the other points, including your feedback. So, uh, Dr. Shai will uh, start the presentation. So, Mike is yours, Dr. Shai. Thank you, Rasha. I'd like to begin by thanking you for all the guidance and leadership that you gave us and the opportunity that you've given us to explore this really exciting challenge, uh, which is only going to motivate us all more in the future. So this project was detecting ALL or acute lymphoblastic leukemia uh, using peripheral blood smears which are smears of blood that go on slides. And we use deep learning models to, to detect. ALL, it's a malignant cancer. It starts in the bone marrow, as you can see in the picture here. And essentially the cancer cells grow so much that they replace the normal healthy cells. The cancer cells are particularly what we call precursor lymphoid cells or lymph cells in their early phase. ALL is the commonest childhood cancer and commonest leukemia in the U.S. It's particularly known for being very aggressive in its spread, making early intervention very crucial to prognosis and survival. The problem statement could be summarized in that ALL is often misdiagnosed because of the symptoms that present. So some of the symptoms include bone pain um, and recurrent sickness, which leads to a delay in proper treatment. Another issue is that trained lab specialists and very highly evolved technology is needed to make the diagnosis accurately using microscopic and technological features. This also leads to a problem of subjective interpretation in which the pathologist who's reading the slide may or may not recognize features uh, that are relevant to a diagnosis of either a benign or a malignant diagnosis. This delay in diagnosis and the subjectivity makes for an in uh, an, an unideal accuracy uh, uh, in, in diagnos diagnosis. I'll pass the mic over to Amusa now. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a great opportunity to be a part of this project. And I'll be taking you guys through um, methods that we use to uh, clean the data set and prepare it for um, classification. So next. Next. Okay, so the data set was gotten from four different sources, um, cargo uh, and other sources, to create a super set which was used for the processing. Okay, next. Uh, these are the steps that we took during the process. We did data selection from cargo, IDB, Barcelona, and uh, we created the super sets. Then uh, we also applied some pre-processing, uh, modeling, and the like. So I'm going, take, I'm going to be taking you through uh, the processing step that we're doing this project. Next. Yes. Yeah, so the first thing we did was to um, change the color space. So initially, the images were in um, RGB, which is the red, green, blue color space. So we decided to convert this into um, lab and extract the alpha channel, which uh, and this alpha channel had the lowest uh, noise to uh, feature ratio. So we decided to extract the alpha channel. Next. 
So after extracting the alpha channel, we saw that there are some noise. Now to remove this noise, we decided to apply a, morpholo a morphological transformation called opening. And what opening does is that um, it starts, it's, it's first of all erodes then dilates. Now, during the process of erosion, it's going to um, totally isolate uh, the noise, then to now dilate so that we can have this, um, the structure of the um, cells to its normal uh, shape. Next. Now, one major challenge we had after uh, extracting, uh, after the morphological transformation was that um, the cell membrane was no longer visible. Now, to um, include this cell membrane, because it's, it is also part of the feature we need for the training, we decided to apply uh, masking. So we decided to extract the foreground, the background uh, of the, uh, Preprocessed image, and we masked it on the original image to extract the cells and the membrane. Next. So uh, I'll be passing it over to Leila to continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Musa. Hi, everyone. Now to the modeling part. For the modeling part, we have used several different models, starting with the baseline. For the baseline, we have used the custom model. Uh, which is actually a simple CNN. Uh, then for, the, for our experiments, we use several different models, and uh, including VG16, ResNet50, and uh, FishingNet B0, uh, and YOLO V8. Now, these models we use as a transfer learning. Uh, different data sets were used for each model. For custom, VG16 and ResNet50, we used our superset. While uh, YOLO V8, we have run, uh, we have run on ALL IDB and Efficient Net B0 on the Kaggle dataset. Um, yeah. Now to show you the results, uh, we have used K-fold uh, validation on uh, uh, for our models that we ran on our uh, superset. The custom model. Uh, as well as transfer learning with the VG16 and ResNet got very good results. We have got uh, F1 score that are uh, around nine, uh, 99%, which are very high. And we did not find any difference between models in these uh, terms. The accuracy metrics and the report, uh, classification report actually shows us uh, the precision recall F1 score and accuracy for uh, these models that we used uh, for different classes, yeah. Um, and the confusion matrix uh, for each of K folds, for each of five K folds, also shows that the uh, models uh, classify correctly most of the cases. And if there, is, if there are any mixed classif uh, classification, they are less than 1%. For validation at one score comparison, we can see that uh, also there is now actually a uh, difference between different models. Custom models, even very simple CNN, does very well uh, this job. Uh, on the other hand, we were uh, seeking um, understandability of the model. And uh, we wanted it to be extend easily extendable and uh, useful for the laboratories. So we were also looking no, no, <laughs> just a second. We were also looking at the YOLO model. YOLO model it was very different from others, as uh, it was uh, focused on uh, actually detection of WBCs, white blood cells inside the uh, PBS uh, peripheral blood smear. So we can see that YOLO also did very well with the detection and the confusion matrix shows us that all the, all the, almost all the WBC as uh, white blood cells were correctly uh, classified. The percentage of unclassified uh, cells was uh, also uh, very small. Yeah, now for the second. Yeah, and then uh, the object detection it actually gave us uh, a bounding box around each, uh, 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 each white blood cell with the percentage of, uh, 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 of uh, how sure it is regarding the uh, uh, classification. 
So we can see that it classifies very well the different types of the cells and the blood smear images with the different precision were used to test the model. It did very well on uh, different types of blood smears. Uh, no, uh, actually, almost no difference between uh, different magnifications and uh, pixelations. Uh, what we can see, it classifies correctly the lymphoblasts and other types of uh, 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 white blood cells like lymphocytes. And now for the uh, explainability of our models, we used BREDCAM, which actually shows what the models were, uh, how the models were learning and what, uh, what the models were concentrated on. Now we can see here in this image, in the uh, grad cam image, that actually the model sees the white blood cells and concentrating on them to understand whether the picture is malignant or not. Yeah, right, to the next slide. And the most import important part of our project is what we've learned. Uh, first of all, model SM, no significant differences in accuracy between ResNet, EfficientNet, and VDG. 16 as uh, all achieved above 99% accuracy and F1 scores as well. Uh, regarding the project management, we have uh, assigned sub leaders uh, to all the tasks and uh, our leaders were communicated well. And uh, of course, this was very important to the success of our project. Uh, regarding the data set, as uh, I also mentioned before, um, a larger image data set with the higher resolution are very important to the model training and to achieve the uh, good accuracy and extendability of the models. So uh, as well as we were looking at uh, classification of subtypes L1, L2, and L3, which are fab classification. And uh, we hope we will uh, have uh, an opportunity to work on those in the future. And of course, our suggestions are to explore uh, different uh, models. For example, exploring two-stage object detection models like mask RCNN or one stage like YOLO and to apply uh, different uh, techniques for interpretability and explainability of our models. And thank you all. Hey, thank you all, guys. It was really great work. Many thanks to be a part of this challenge. Without your creativity, we will not a uh, success, actually. Uh, now, uh, the floor is open uh, for you all to provide feedback on this project. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Rasha, Amusa, Leila, and Peter. Um, all of you contributed so much uh, and so integrally to the success. I think we learned a lot and ultimately we achieved our, our goal and we produced findings that will be beneficial to others in the future. So thank you for the opportunity. I had a great experience. You're welcome, Dr. Shai. Thank you, Dr. Shai. Thank you. Okay, so next I like to hear from you what you had gained from uh, doing this project. Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> Mike, is you so, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Before this project, um, I didn't really know much about uh, email preprocess in Apple. So I think that, that was the... Um, the one of the biggest things I learned here and also how to work with other people to achieve a common goal. So I think that was the that was the most important thing. Thank you. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay, so finally again all of your efforts is appreciated guys from Omdina Corp and this will be provided through an experience certification as machine learning engineer role that will be issued, issued within uh, the next 10 days uh, through your emails. Uh, now I'm ready to ask any question, if there are any, or any suggestion, all is welcome. I'm just looking forward to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Um, 
last but not least, uh, we will have an extended challenge for ALL, as you know. So we will do an extended challenge for ALL classification uh, to its uh, various types uh, with a specialist help in the data challenge section. Hoping uh, from all to rejoin us in the next uh, challenge. Thanks for being here all and I wish you a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rasha. Thank you very much. Thank you. And congrats, everyone. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> all. Nice to meet you guys. You too. We'll meet soon, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Bye-bye.